Hello everyone, I'm freaking out man. You still need to really see Super Troopers 2. The first movie is awesome, I've seen it quite a few times. And I ended up seeing Avengers Infinity War instead, which was a great movie, I can't wait to part 2. And I still need to of course see Deadpool 2 and Solo. But hopefully I'll be able to get one of these in on this weekend. Right now I'm going to be playing OutRun Arcade in an entirely different way. We're going to be playing it with a little bit of a neon psychedelic feel here. Fuse complete with a Jan Hammer style score with electronic drums and synthesizer straight out of the Miami Vice 1980s book. Absolutely digging the soundtrack, the visuals with the shader in action. Great, great shader here. And I'll show you how to switch to this shader in RetroArch. But digging the electronic drums here. Feels like I'm literally watching Miami Vice for the first time. A little bit of a combination of the original NES Red Racer as well when I first pushed the button to switch to the 3D mode. Here we have an incredible soundtrack with synthesizers here. And I am playing the custom Outrun OST, which I've done in a few previous videos, courtesy of GP Star. If you want to see the other music that I've done in the previous videos for this game, uh, look up uh, the Outrun custom OST test. I have two videos for it. In the tutorial on how to add the samples, you can see me do within the Mortal Kombat tutorial. I did it for NAND as well as USB. But I'm going to be loading another game that is absolutely perfect with the shader that I just displayed within the OutRun Arcade. We'll load a veritable NES classic, none other than the original Super Mario Brothers. And there's a whole lot of history with this game. There was a point when there's such an influx of bad games on the market, a flood of games that we had a video game crash and roughly late 1983, early 84, and it killed the entire video game industry. Then lo and behold, Nintendo came out with this game here, and the video games were back in action. But I'm going to be going into RetroArch options here. And yes, E.T. and Pac-Man were not the sole reasons for the crash. It was literally just a ton of games, and there wasn't even enough room on the shelves to store them all. But RetroArch options, load shader preset. And I'm going to be uh, clicking the one that says Blinky. Just think of Pac-Man Blinky and you'll never forget the psychedelic neon feel here. But I loaded it. And I'm going to resume this game. And we're going to see a little bit of a neon psychedelic feel here with Super Mario Brothers. But absolutely incredible shader. Definitely check it out. It is especially fun to play with 3D racing games. Such as Ridge Racer, Hard Driving, and so on. You're gonna get a little bit of a, a little bit of a two for one today because I'm gonna do a little bit of an intermediate add-in of games via RetroArch tutorial today. I'm gonna show you how to add a very very special variant of Outrun. I'll do that next after I exit this game, but I'm gonna turn the shader off here. I'm gonna go into a quick menu here from RetroArch shaders again, and I'm gonna load the uh, shader preset. And I'm going to load stock. So stock and we're good to go. Then I'm going to exit RetroArch. And I'm going to show you something that is a culmination of a lot of work. And you've seen me talking about OutRun and displaying OutRun over the last two months. But here's the culmination of that. And an incredible new core that I'm going to show you in action here. As well as a tutorial on how to add it so you can play it on your mini NES and SNES. It is right here, it is called Cannonball, and it is not your typical OutRun, it is an enhanced OutRun engine. It is, for all intents and purposes, better than the original OutRun. I mean, you'll see it in action, and it runs so much smoother than any other version of OutRun can possibly run on your NES SNES Mini. But this intermediate add-in of games is going to go in correlation directly along with uh, DOSBox as well. Right now I'm playing this for a moment. And the soundtrack to Outrun never ever gets old. I mean, just randomly at work, the music will come to my mind. I'll be thinking, humming inside my head. And I'll be like, what game was that from? Was it Space Area or Outrun or even Afterburner? But it never ever gets old. It always just randomly pops in my head.
but absolutely seamless, very, very smooth frame rate, built from the ground up, and then great, a, a great, great enhanced outrun engine here with a score of options, you can see from the intro screen. But speaking of DOS box, and yes, I am running this with the Cannonball Core. I'll show you which core you need to install as well, to, as well as how to add this game. But I'm going to exit now, and we're going to be trying to load a DOS box game. Then I'm going to switch over to the PC and do the tutorial portion on how to add this. So you get a little bit of a two for one today. We're going to load this great, great uh, Schmuck Classic that you can run on DOS called Raptor Call of the Shadows and Commander Keen is your basic game that you would typically load for DOS box as your first game but I'm gonna do an intermediate game just so you can see how it relates to how you have to add it via Hacksheet 2. So I'm gonna try to load this game like I typically would after adding it via Hacksheet and you'll see the structure in a moment here. But Commander Keen is definitely one of the first games you should try loading. It is a very beginner game and a great game to start DOSBox with. I must run the setup first. Okay, I have a little bit of a problem here, but luckily I remember the exact name of the CLV folder that I installed this to. When I switch over to the computer, you'll know exactly what I am referring to. But right now I'm going to go into the RetroArc options, load content, start directory, and I'm going to go directly to the game folder. And I would recommend not having linked export mode on, otherwise the games will not be in the directory. They'll be linked to instead. If you have linked export off, all the original files will be right in the context of these files. But I'm going to go to the exact folder that the game is in. And typically if you're adding an NES game or a Sega Master System game, you simply add the game and make sure the command line is correct and you're good to go. But in the case of DOS box, and of course a few other systems, and of course the Cannonball Engine, you have to do it a different way. In this case, what you're going to want to do is add the main executable as the game that you had via Hashi. And once that is done, you're going to copy all the rest of these files into that same CLV directory, and then you're going to make sure the command line is appropriate, and then sync it over. But I'll show you this in action when I switch over to the computer. But it told me I needed to run the setup. So right now I'm going to run the setup. And I am running USB host right now, complete with a keyboard that I have connected. And I click the setup here. I'm going to go through the paces here of the setup here. I'm just going to let it do all the default settings here. And then I'm going to save the settings. And then I can simply exit the game because I ran the setup and I'm good to go. And once I'm exited, I'm going to load the exact same game that I just ran the setup on. And it should load properly now. So I ran the setup. And now I'm loading the main executable again after running the setup. And I'll do more advanced DOSBox videos, but I'd like to get you into the beginner and intermediate stuff to start with. I mean, there are CD-based games that are more complicated and comprehensive and take a little bit more in the way of steps to run. Right now we're loading the graphics here. And I did actually legitimately buy this game several years ago. A friend told me about this shmup and I didn't think uh, DOS could have a shmup this great but it really is an incredible game and I did do a performance upgrade on this which you would have seen in one of my shmup extravaganza videos. You can run DOSBox via a controller as well. I'll show you that briefly as well. But we got the game running. Everything's nice and good to go here. And we'll be switching over to the PC tutorial portion within a minute or two. Running great here. Running a very, very nice smooth frame right here. 
But again, I'm very thoroughly surprised at how incredible this shmup is. I never thought a shmup like this could even exist on DOS, but yes, it does. But what I'm going to do now, I muted the sound for a moment here. I'm going to go into the options here. And I'm going to show you how you would typically configure the controls. It's set the gamepad right now. What you're going to need to do is switch it to the keyboard and mouse or retro keyboard, whichever one you have depending on your retro installation. Then you're going to back out, then go back to controls yet again. And then when you go to the buttons here, you can actually configure these to anything on the keyboard and roughly play the controller with any keyboard mapping you so choose to play. But we're going to switch over to the PC now and I'm going to do the tutorial portion on how to add both of these via Hashi 2. So I'm going to shut this down and switch over to the PC. Okay. Now we're going to go to my working folder here. And I have the OutRun Revision B ROM set right now. And what I'm going to do is simply extract it to a folder of the same name. And then via Hashi2, I'm going to add more games. And I'm going to go to that exact folder that I just showed you. And I'm simply going to add any file within this folder as a game. Now I'm going to pay close attention to the command line. You're going to want to make sure it is not 7-zipped. So I'm going to right click on it and decompress it. And when it is decompressed, I'll finish the process here for this particular game. And I'll add the artwork in the command line, name and all that good stuff. It's very, very easy to do, but essentially you're simply going to add any of the ROM set files within this extracted directory here. And I'm doing quite a bit of multitasking so my computer is a little bit slower than normal. I'm typically doing 10 to 11 different things on my computer at any given time. There's also an option within Hashi2CE Hashi CE, where you can disable the compression entirely. I'll show you that in a moment when it's done doing this little process here. But my computer is essentially in a little bit of a rut right now because of my multitasking. I'm always downloading and uploading, running multiple things. Of course, Chrome has like 11 instances open, all that good stuff. I have just everything running in the background here. But bear with me for a few more seconds and we should be done with this little decompression phase here. My computer probably needs a restart at this point with all the stuff I've been doing in the last couple days. But I never edit my videos. You always get to see my fails and this is a little bit of a fail right here, the decompression phase. Okay. <laughs> Sorry about that little delay there. But if you go into settings, compress games when added, I'm going to disable that entirely for right now. And then I'm going to simply rename this to Cannonball. Enhanced OutRun Engine. Then the command line, and I'm going to go to the core that I'm going to need for this. Modules install extra modules. I'm going to go to the core in my set. It'll be called Cannonball. And right here it says bin forward slash Cannonball. So I'm going to put that right here for the command line. And then I'm going to uh, add the artwork. And I already have the artwork that I'd like to use on my computer in the core set. And the other version of Cannonball that was previously in my set. Go figure. I'm going to go right into the set. Into the games folder. And I have to go to uh, all files. It's in this folder right here. I'm just going to extract it for a moment here. I could also Google it, but I'm going to use the one that I used before. 
But yes, you get Google as well and put whatever you want. But yes, this is how you add Cannonball. Just make sure you're not compressing the file. Use bin forward slash Cannonball. And then add the artwork and sync it over. And I always, always recommend closing Hashi and reopen it before you sync export or linked export games. But now we're going to do the DOS portion of this. I want to add a DOS game. Going to go to my working folder yet again. And I have the folder here with the files I need. I'm going to add the RIP executable for Raptor. And I'm going to name that uh, Raptor Call of Shadows. DOS semicolon Raptor Call of Shadows. Ben forward slash DOS box. I'm going to Google for artwork real quick. Should be a pretty quick result. Good enough for me. And then here's where things get a little bit tricky. Of course, you're going to need to make sure it is not compressed. Essentially, anything that is a CD-based game or DOS box, etc. Executables, for sure, you do not ever want to compress. But what I'm going to do right now is I'm going to open this folder right here by showing Windows Ex Explorer. I have that open right here. And then I'm going to add games again and go to that same directory. And I'm going to copy... All the files that are in the game. So everything but the executable. And I'm going to copy them right into this directory. So again, you always, always have to add the main executable. And then you can copy the rest of the files into that directory. And if it's a game like Commander Keen, which is real easy to manage, you simply add the executable and run it and you're good to go. But in a game like this where you have the setup... Just run the setup like I did from load content, navigate to that folder, run the setup executable, and you're good to go. It is real, real easy to do. And this is what I call intermediate game add-in for DOSBox, as well as Cannonball. But hope you enjoyed the video, and uh, you'll be able to download the Cannonball Core from my GitHub. I'll have a link to it, and then I'll have uh, an update within the next few days with many, many more things.